Hi all, this is Jan Almighty and welcome to this video. So hi all, um, I'm back uh, with the video where you can actually see my face. If anybody cares about that, I'm really glad that I can do that again because I uh, really like my videos who have this kind of a dynamic note rather than have everything static and just the pieces moving. But that being said, let's jump into this game because it's a pretty long one. So we are back with the candidates of 2018 and now we are in round 9. And around eight, sorry. So with the white pieces we have uh, Alexander Grischuk and with the black pieces uh, we have Vlad Kramnik. Actually, I was hoping that uh, today uh, there wouldn't be that much of a choice uh, between the games. I know, I know there were exciting games, uh, but essentially I hope that uh, each and every one of those will end up being a draw. But uh, after I got home, I saw this game and I saw Grischuk and Kramnik are still playing and then Grischuk is, yeah uh in a good situation so i decided that i'm going to show this game so i i'm going so the title above kind of says it all but i would really like to show you this one because yeah it is a long one and just uh hold in for it c4 e6 knight to c3 d5 d4 knight to f6 even though Grishchuk started with c4 uh this kind of a setup just goes in throughout the tournament Queen's Gambit, Gambit declined and Kramnik goes for the semi tarash something we haven't seen yet. We have e3, so the, the question is, would you like to go for something more open or defensive? So Grishchuk decided to play e3 and we have d takes on c4, bishop takes on c4. We have a6, a6 threatening b5, so bishop to b3 and b5 nevertheless. We have e4 now and as I've often mentioned, you don't want to allow white to have this kind of a center. So Kramnik decided to play c takes on d4. We have knight takes on d4 and bishop to b7. So now uh, Richard plays the best move, which is e5, even though you're releasing this bishop and he has a really strong piece on this diagonal. Uh, the, the thing is that you really need to defend this pawn somehow. Queen to e2 isn't possible because the knight is defended. Bishop to c2 isn't the best move, so e5 definitely the best move. And now knight to e4. A common idea also that you can see, for example, in those Queen's Indian setup where knight comes on e4, and if knight takes, you have a bishop on e4, which becomes a really strong piece. So white doesn't take uh, here. Richard goes castle, knight c3, and b takes on c3. And as we can see, these pawns are kind of scattered here on the queen side and white would like to yeah, get rid of that so knight to c6 and after that we have a4 bishop to c5 black continued development he still needs to castle a takes on b5 a takes on b5 rook a8 and bishop on a8 so a little bit of exchanges and now in this situation we can see that uh, this this pawn is free for the taking and this pawn is free for the taking knight takes on b5 but here in this situation, Kramnik decided not to take on e5 right away because probably he wasn't feeling too good about queen takes on d8 after this, uh, uh, king takes on d8 and rook to d1. White has a more active position, bishop to f4 is coming, so he decided to go, after, instead of knight to e5, to go castle. And now we have queen to d8, rook to d8. So for black, it kind of looks better because now he has the rook on the open d file. We have bishop to e4, f4, but for that uh, white, so here Grishuk decided to defend the pawn. We have h6 and h4 preventing g5. Knight to e7, so releasing this bishop and also wanting to put the knight on a much better d5 square. Rook to d1. Grishuk wants to exchange the rooks, but Kramnik won't have it. He plays rook to b8. Put it on the file where there are pieces. Bishop to c4 defending and bishop to c6. Knight to d4 once again attacking the bishop and bishop to e4, putting it on the strong central square. We have h5, kind of stopping knight to g6, but we have knight to d5. Bishop d5 and bishop to d5. And in this situation we can see that black is left with the bishop pair. And uh, on the other hand, white has this pawn, which is an extra pawn, but uh, it's not all that clear how this pawn will actually be used, because having the bishop pair in the open position such as this, yeah, could be really dangerous. We have bishop to e3, and now rook to c8, putting the rook on the c file where the pawn is, and rook to e1. So now 
white would like to move the bishop, uh, move the knight so that bishops can be exchanged or something like that and put the bishop on d4. Bishop c4 and now knight to f3 is possible. Uh, here Kramnik doesn't want to exchange the bishops so he plays bishop to a3, bishop to d4 and bishop to d3. So now it's just a question of how will black use his uh, bishop pair uh, in order to molest uh, white pieces. We have knight to d2 and bishop to b2, so twice attacking this pawn, but nevertheless rook to you. So first knight to f1, sorry, uh, because now in this situation actually taking on c3 isn't possible because rook to c1 and yeah, uh, the, uh, the bishop is pinned because rook will be taken with the tempo. So you don't want to do it right away, rather first was rook to c4 was played and now you can actually take on c3 because then the bishop is hanging. But now we have rook to e3 attacking the bishop, bishop has to move, he moved to f5, but now knight to g3 is with tempo, bishop to h7, and now king to h2. So now this pawn is defended, and black has to think of something else. Bishop to c1, rook to e2, moving out of the way, and bishop to f4, appending this knight. So we have king to h3, and rook to a4. So now the rook will move to a1 or a2, depending where the rook is and trying to do something on the second and first rank. But we have king to g4, bishop to c1, and king to f3. Bishop to d3 attacking the rook, rook e1, and bishop to b2 once again attacking this pawn. We have king to e3, bishop to c2, and king to d2. We can see how Grishuk, since he didn't, uh, he kind of put the knight on a nice square, but essentially this knight isn't helping in the pushing of this pawn, or actually in that kind of a defense. Uh, rather than that, he used this king in uh, such a great king walk to actually come to d2, come closer to the c pawn to actually help into the position. And here, after all of this, white is, white is clearly better because black's king is still on g8 and not actually doing anything. So we have here bishop to b3 and now bishop, uh, rook to b1, putting the rook on the line on file where the bishops are. Rook to a2 and king to d3 moving out of the way so that there aren't any discoveries. Bishop to a4 and now it's time to activate the knight. Knight to e4. Uh, bishop to b5 isn't any kind of a threat because c4 simple and then there will be exchanges and white will stay with the pawn up and he will win this game. So Kramnik doesn't go for this, rather he moves the bishop and yeah, now the rook is open on the second rank. We have king to e3 and bishop to c2 attacking the rook and the knight. We have rook back to e1, possible maybe better move was rook to b8 check, king goes to h7, he won't come to g6 soon because of this pawn, and uh, yeah, try something on the 8th and 7th rank, but Grishuk played maybe a more natural move, keep the rook on the 1st rank in order to keep it close to the defense, and still try to make some moves in order to push this pawn to c4 and then closer to the queen. We have bishop to b3 because you don't want to exchange bishop for this knight. You, white will just stay with the pawn up. Uh, and the, the bishops are of the same color and this is a winning endgame. Uh, g4 and now Grishuk decided to yeah expand on the king side in order to yeah, solidify his position before he goes to this pawn push. Bishop to d5 and king to d3. Bishop to e7, so now kind of a retreat with the bishops from Kramnik and rook can come to b1. We have rook to a8, defending rook b8 check, and now f4, continuing with the pawn push on the king side. Bishop to h4 and rook to h1 attacking the bishop. Bishop to d8 and rook back to b1. Sometimes in these games you have these moves that are kind of a repeating of the position because you would like to earn more time and yeah, essentially just uh, yeah, get a breeder, so to speak. Bishop to c7 and king to e3. King to h7, but now a great chance to play knight to d6. It isn't good to take because then you have another pass pawn and it is easily defended because it's on the dark square and this pawn on f7 is defended. So king to g8 back and we have a rook to b5. Bishop c6 and rook to b4 and now bishop to d8. So doesn't want to take the knight, of course. And we have bishop to b6. White would like to exchange one pair, so the bishop, so that uh, black doesn't have the bishop pair. Bishop to h4 and bishop back to d4. We have bishop to g2. Uh, black would like to play bishop to h3 and then 
yeah, maybe try and do something when the rook comes uh, to this g pawn and h pawn then. But we have rook to b2 attacking, bishop to c6, rook to b6, bishop to g2, rook to b2, bishop to c6, and now rook to b3. So Grishchuk doesn't go for the repetition of moves. They reached uh, once again time control in move 60 and they get additional time. So now actually he finds this move rook to b3 so he can push c4 because there aren't any checks on the third rank. We have bishop to g3 and now c4 finally. Bishop to h2 and f5. So yeah, also releasing the tension on the king side in order that, that it's easier to focus more on the queen side. We have e takes on f5 and now knight takes on f5, threatening to jump on e7. So we have king to h7 and bishop to b2. We have also guarding the e3 square so that the rook can uh, roam freely without worrying of get getting checked. We have rook to e8 attacking the pawn and knight to d6 attacking the rook. Rook has to move, rook to e7 and now rook to b8. Infiltration of the 8th rank. And now we have f6. So clearly Black's idea is to actually capture this pawn. And how will white defend? Actually, we have rook to c8 here attacking the bishop. So bishop moves. And the better, the best move was here to play bishop to d7 because you're attacking the rook, threatening to take on g4. And actually rook to c7 pinning the knight is a move, but essentially after f takes on e5, there aren't any immediate threats and black can hold this. But maybe because uh, Kramnik was worried that bishop to d7, rook c7 is too big of a threat, he played bishop to h1. And after this we have knight to f5, rook once again is attacked, he has to move, doesn't want to stay on e6 because rook c7, but that was maybe the best move, he played rook to b7 attacking this bishop. And now the best move was actually to play e6. I mean, the same idea follows with the e takes on f6, uh, which uh, uh, Grishuk did. But now, after rook to b3, for example, you have bishop c3, rook c3, and king to d2 or d4. Essentially, what will happen, uh, there is no yeah, possibility to, that you can stop this pawn and it will be pushed to a promotion. So that was a possibility to quickly win the game, but we have instead of that e takes on f6, we have rook to b3, bishop to c3, and now once again it isn't good to take, but now white and black has the possibility to simply capture the pawn. So we have king to d2 defending the bishop and also releasing it that he is threatening to take. Bishop to f4, king to c2 attacking the rook, and rook to b8. Rook to takes and bishop takes and now they exchange rooks. Still, it's not a winning endgame, but white is a pawn up, black has a bishop pair in the open field, yeah, it's uh, still a game that needs to be played. And it's already a 74th move. And uh, now it's also a question uh, which player is uh, better prepared physically to actually endure uh, yeah, a stress such as this. We have knight to e7, wants to improve the position of the knight. Bishop to e4 check, king to d2, bishop to f4 check, king to e2. We have king to g7. So finally, Kramnik decided to include king in, the king into the game because... Now, after all of this, um, yeah, king is really needed in the center. But now we have knight to f5 check. Um, yeah, bishop doesn't want to take because this pawn is just free for the pushing to a promotion. Rather, king to f7 is played. And now after bishop to d2, black has a problem because either he will exchange or definitely this h6 pawn will fall. Bishop to e5 and bishop pawn to h6. So now white is two pawns up and yeah. The only hope for him is to keep the bishop pair and try to do some tricks with the bishops and checks in order to try and draw this game. But essentially at this point, it is just a losing game. King to e6, we have bishop to e3. So Grishuk isn't a friend of the exchange here because he is a pawn up essentially after that. And uh, Kramnik goes for it. Bishop takes, g takes and king takes. And now it's just a matter of pushing over the pawn. So we have h6. Uh, and pushing of the c5, uh, c pawn, and uh, yeah, this is just winning. We have king to g6, c5, f5, and now king to f3, you won't allow f4. Now if f4 is played, you will just take, and if bishop takes, the king cannot catch both of the pawns. So we have king to f7, uh, bishop to f4 first, attacking the bishop so that he moves, bishop d4, c6, 
king to e7, c7, king to d7, and a7, and now both of the pawns are on the seventh rank. Uh, this king is defending c8, and this bishop is defending h8, but uh, now the king will come into the game, and uh, you cannot stop both threats. We have king to c8, and the idea is to come with the king, have a little walk to the d5 square, play bishop to e5, and there is no stopping of pushing the h-pawn to a promotion. So king to e2, king to d7, king to d3, and in this position actually Kramnik decided to resign the game. And yeah, it is the longest game of the tournament, 91 moves. Uh, Kramnik always has this bad luck of, uh, yeah, just... He's playing a good game, but in the end it kind of falls apart for him. If this isn't the first game, he doesn't see the drawing line or the winning continuation and he gets punished for that more than other people on this tournament. So, yeah. But yeah, that being said, uh, yeah, I'm uh, really glad that things are heating up but because we can see more exciting games. Uh, Ding Liren had some chances against Aronian. He didn't manage to yeah convert on that. Uh, once again, he draw the game, so eight draws for him. And Caruana had some chances against Wesley, so but also didn't wasn't able to convert. So all the other games ended up being a draw. And yeah, then we are looking forward to round nine, which is tomorrow. So yeah, that being said, I would like to thank you for watching this video, and I will see you next time.